cool. So, Drew, how are you? So, so far, so good, Alex. Just starting my Saturday here. So, hopping on this with you, hoping yeah. I can help, hoping answer some questions for you. So, uh, I kind of liked how we did it the last time with my last uh, interview. I kind of mm -hmm. started from the top and worked my way down. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, what you do as an inside sales uh, representative? Okay, so yeah, for so for the most part, it's mostly uh, outbound calls for the most part. Um, I try to block my schedule up for the day. So, um, since I got a lot of calls to make every day, I try to, you know, schedule it the best I can. I usually wake up and try to do a little bit of prospecting when I wake up in the morning. That's around like uh, 7.30. So I wake up at 7.30. I'll prospect. Well, I'll get ready. It takes about 15, 20 minutes. I'll prospect on like LinkedIn, Facebook and things like that for businesses and any prospects I can probably reach out to that day. Throw those people into my pipeline. Um, from there, I'll usually head to work after that. I got to get there around 8.30. So that day, from so for a typical day, I'll usually start uh, prospecting like my businesses pretty early. So I'll start reaching out to my businesses for about an hour, try to catch either like a decision maker or someone like that pretty early on. But it's mostly just outbound calls for the most part. Once I hit around like 10 o'clock, I reach back out to my normal clientele of people and go from there. But it's mostly outbound calls for the most part. I set up seat appointments every now and then as much as I can. The season's just getting underway, so those are starting to get a little bit more successful. But for yeah. the most part, just kind of going along like that. Oh, uh, What classifies as an, out as an outbound call? What is that? Who's all involved in that or who is part of that? Yeah, so for an outbound call, it's mostly just me reaching out to someone who could be a potential buyer, either a business, um, a normal consumer, anyone who's, a, I could think potentially use us, the Blues, as an asset. So as you may know, I'm an inside sales rep for the St. Louis Blues. So pretty much anyone who can utilize Enterprise Center. I also work for Stiefel Theater. So anyone who okay. could use um, Stiefel Theater events like the comedy shows and music and uh, music events that come through there try to get those off as well. So anyone who could potentially use us in any way, I'm, I'm contacting pretty much everybody. There's no, uh, <laughs> no uh, clear cut person. So anyone who could utilize the blues is pretty much people I'm communicating with every day. Cool. So I, I do have, I have a question that I haven't asked and that I have been waiting to ask you when you called me, because first of all, I answered all unknown numbers now because of you. <laughs> I, uh, that actually like, just, that was so amazing how that happened. Just to walk. Yeah. I remember your name popping yeah. up. It was like on my CRM, just another list of the hundred <laughs> days of calling every day. And I mean, you told me what you did and I mean, I kept the conversation going with you. So, I mean, and here we are now, I mean, this, that was what, about a month ago. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> kind of crazy. And did you, by any chance, did you know I was a sport management major? Not at the time. I mean, okay. when I called you, I was just for a prospective buyer. And I mean, I figured out where you were going to school and you mentioned being in the sport management class. So we were, we, I told you I was doing that as well when I had graduated. So just chopped it up a little bit about what I had done and what you were doing. And here we are. Cool. So when you, so you say you work for Stifle too. Now, when you, I guess when you get hired by the blues, right? Does that mean you also get hired by Stifle or how does that work? Did you do? You yeah, so so technically I'm employed by the Enterprise Center. So Enterprise Center is also a part of Stifle Theater. So any events that go through Enterprise Center, be it mostly blues games. So most of the time I'm selling blues games. Yeah. But um, I can sell any concert that goes through there. I know Luke Combs is coming here in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I've been talking to a couple of people about some suites for those. Um, the weekend was coming through. He just canceled his show. Oh Sad. man, yeah. But um, Justin Bieber's coming. Got some. Hey. Got some good acts coming through. So, uh, but yeah, pretty much uh, anywhere in that facility is under my umbrella. So I'll pretty much cover anything through them. Is up? Isn't Elton John coming in like? He is April. He is Elton John is coming. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So um, I one thing I I actually noticed on your LinkedIn. You are with the Sports Commission, right? Yeah, St. Louis Sports Commission. Yeah. I actually uh, reached out to uh, 
Mr. Viverito, he's a part of that organization through LinkedIn. I reached out to him asking about various groups that would be of interest that he thinks that I should be a part of uh, based on my interests and my goals in life. So um, he is actually a part of the St. Louis Sports Commission and he recommended that I join. And so I did. And we've actually had a meeting coming up here in a few weeks and then we're going to be attending the Musial Awards together. So that would be another fun event that we're going to be having an outing at. But yeah, so I joined you, that recently. What do you do with them exactly? Well, yeah, so so far I haven't done too much just because I joined them about maybe three or four weeks ago. So we haven't had like any major events yet. They do a lot of fundraising mm -hmm. and um, just raising benefits for different uh, initiatives here in the city of St. Louis. So it's, uh, it's just a nice organization to be a part of. I mean, they do a lot of group outings, not as much as they want to due to uh, COVID and things like that. But um, a lot of the things are being virtual right now, but I think the musical awards are one of the uh, first ones I'll be attending. Yeah, so actually, I have been reaching out to Tim Ryan. Okay. I am trying to uh, work with the St. Louis Sports Commission as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually put myself out there for the volunteering opportunities for the uh, Division Three Volleyball Championship coming up and also the Mutual Awards. Nice. Yeah. And um, uh, I forget, he even talked about maybe there being a mini internship for those two or three weeks. We'll see about that. I think he was kind of, just throwing that idea out there. But yeah, yeah I'm I mean, actually. Any, yeah, any experience, man, is mm -hmm. good experience. Whether it's a single event that lasts a day or an event that lasts, or an internship that lasts six months, any any experience that you can get and throw on your resume is good experience. I mean, I, I'll use Nick, my one of these experiences. I have an example. There was one time my sophomore year uh, down at the University of Tampa, my sport management program, there was an intern, like a volunteering opportunity where you could go to the PGA Q school championship tour. So yeah. it was like um, all the um, older guys in the PGA tour and the champions league. And um, so it was pretty much just me going out there and scoring for them. And okay. it was, it was a one day thing. It was super cold out. I was, I was miserable the entire time because oh. it was so cold that day in Florida, but it was, it was cold a fun experience. <laughs> I, yeah. It was cold to me in Florida, but um <laughs> I had to, uh, I got to meet some cool people. Um, but I get asked about that on almost every interview. It's a small little blurb at the bottom left of my resume. But I swear every time at almost every interview I'm ever in, people always bring that. I was like, oh, so what did you do with the PGA? I'm like, oh, that was like a, that was like a one day event, but it was cool. And I always tell them about it. And they're like, oh man, like that's awesome. And so, I mean, any kind of experience you can get, like whether it's, like I said, a one-day event or an eight-month-long internship, just get every bit of experience you can. And uh, speaking of little volunteer opportunities, I happen to notice you also went to the Super Bowl. I did. The yeah. Super Bowl was an awesome experience. I know you guys are going yeah. to a California here soon and doing that. So, yeah, um, that was another opportunity that was put in front of me as – being in Tampa, the Super Bowl was being hosted in Tampa. So, I mean, it was right in my backyard. So, I mean, there was no, being a sport management manager, there was nothing keeping me from doing that. And where I worked was probably two blocks up the street from my school. So I was able to work the NFL experience, which um, was pretty much just a bunch of like NFL drills that were set up um, at uh, Julie B. Lane Park down there in Tampa. And so that was a really fun experience. Got to work with a lot of people who kind of flew in for the game who never really experienced the game of football and didn't know the rules. So they, I mean, you would have grown men who are, you know, who knows how old coming up there wanting to hold the football, running drills, like running through like pads and stuff. <laughs> so it was kind of fun just seeing the excitement on everyone's faces. And then you'd have the kids who would come up who were just had, were loving to be there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, being a part of that experience was pretty great. Uh, who did you uh, – so were you kind of by yourself or were you with, like, another uh, – like, an organization that went there? Yeah, so um, there are a lot of other sport management students who were doing that. Um, I wasn't working with anyone directly who was um, – I was also a sport management major. Mm -hmm. Actually, the group I was with actually was a group of people who had – flown down here to work for the Super Bowl. So it was pretty cool getting to, uh, you know, like mingle with people who had flown down here just to do the same thing I was doing right. in my backyard, you know? So it was a cool experience. I didn't work with anyone directly through any certain organizations. A lot of them were just like diehard sports fans who worked in sports at some point in their life and just 
love the experience of getting out there, which I don't blame them because it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. I mean, we're, we are literally doing the same thing. We are flying out there in February. That's going to be fun, man. Yeah. Y'all are going to have a good time, especially being somewhere you guys aren't really used to. It's mm. going to be a ball. So are there any other, you know, uh, volunteer or internships that, you know, really stuck out with, stuck, stuck with you, you know, skills that you learned from them? Yeah, well, um, had a lot. I've had, I've had quite a few of just, I noticed odd, that. <laughs> just odd jobs and experiences. Um, there was one time I was working for um, a basketball team down in uh, Florida. It was called the Gulf Coast Lions in a startup league called the Basketball League. Mm. And um, it was me and my, my roommate at the time, Connor, asked for help on it because he was the uh, in charge of kind of marketing, spreading the word around the team and like getting people into the stadium or the arena or wherever we were playing at the time. And um it was funny because I'd never worked in basketball before. I never really worked. I'd only had maybe two internships in sports prior to this. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember we showed up to the first game and they didn't have the three point line down on the, um, on the court yet. So it was like, <laughs> we're getting here. We're trying to get people into the building and we don't have the three point line down on the court yet. So me and Connor, we hop in our car. We're like, it's, 30 minutes before tip off when we we're driving to hardware stores trying to find like black tape to put down on the on the floor for this three-point line and it was just like man it's it's those things it's things like that that just make you like wow like you really just have to be prepared all the yeah. time and like it's, you never know what you're going to run into when it comes to sports you know you just right. have to be have your head on a swivel ready to go at all times um i had another internship at usf was a sport marketing internship and that was just fun. I love that. That was fun. I got to meet some really cool people who enjoy the same things I do. I got to be uh, pretty hands-on with the um, the PA announcing and music producing there for like the basketball games and soccer games and softball games. So just doing that and being able to, you know, like just get really a more hands-on experience for like the operations side of sport because I never really got to do that. So being on that side was pretty cool. And then just being able to uh, really grow as an individual myself, because going into that internship, you had to like know how to do Photoshop and stuff. And right, I had never right. worked with Photoshop my entire life. Didn't even have it on my computer. I had to go out and get it. And yeah. it, I mean, I kind of almost like not fell in love with it, but it kind of it's almost like a side hobby now where I, you know, just mess around with Photoshop and do stuff like that. But it's pretty fun. I mean, just going into things and learning new things and letting yourself grow as an individual is pretty cool. So Drew, I love that you just said that about Photoshop because I've noticed a lot of the jobs that, you know, I could potentially get into need Photoshop skills. Dude, I have never touched Photoshop. Yeah, and it's <laughs> a-okay, man. Like, honestly, like, if you go through, like, YouTube and stuff like that mm-hmm. and just go through, like, tutorials, people showing you how to do things. I mean, and a lot of the things they ask you to do in sport isn't – it's not, it's not hard. It's, yeah. like, more so step-by-step processes. So, like, you know, plugging information in for, like, a flyer or, like, a design that's going up. So nothing incredibly too difficult. I mean, now if you're getting into, like, graphic design, like, yeah, now you probably yeah, need yeah. a little bit more there, but as for like what I was doing in marketing, it wasn't anything too crazy. Okay. Do you, I mean, you said YouTube, but do you have any other like recommendations for Photoshop, like uh, tutorials or stuff like that? Or is YouTube probably the best? I, I like YouTube, um, honestly, just practicing, like just getting on there, not having anything like you have to make, but just like, Hey, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make up something. I'm gonna make a flyer for, for the school basketball team just make it and i mean just practice i mean just save it and you never know like it may see the right eye and be like oh wow i like that i mean and don't be too hard on yourself because i remember the first like 15 20 things i made like every time i make one i'm like oh this is cool and then i look at it two weeks later after i learned something else i'm like oh that was that was terrible <laughs> like, i could do so much better so it's like just you know taking it step by step and never being too hard on yourself. I'm extremely hard on myself all the time. Like if things aren't perfect, I'm pretty uh, upset about it and get to the point where it can can kind of bug me, but I'm getting better at that. So it's not really just being too hard on yourself and letting things work themselves out and just getting better at one thing at a time and not trying to, you know, be a master at something right when you try it because it's not going to happen. So Mm -hmm. 
just take it one step at a time and master little steps and everything will come together in the end. And you'll look back at the beginning and be like, wow, like how far I've come, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, with all these skills that you learn, volunteering opportunities, different experiences, um, did you know you were going to get into ticketing? Uh, no, <laughs> I didn't. I did not at all. Um, I actually had a ticket sales class that uh, my professor, Dr. Smucker, down in, at the University of Tampa taught. And I really liked the class. I mean, it was more so he was giving us random objects and like pretty much teaching us how to sell like mm -hmm. things you don't think people need, but getting them to think they need them, you know? And so I really liked the class. I think it grew on me a little bit as the time went on. And once it came to graduation, I had worked in marketing. I had worked in operations. And um, I hadn't really gotten onto the sales side, but it was something that always interested me since that class. So once I graduated, I kind of went out on Teamwork Online and shot my resumes out to various teams. Mm -hmm. Not wasn't, I mean, wasn't, you know, like didn't have all the confidence in the world about it because I didn't really have any sales experience under my belt. So it was more so just me having to nail my interviews. So I went into every interview with questions ready, just full front on that. So, I mean, 100% ready when it went into my interviews and just gave 100%. So, I mean, if you try hard and you're prepared, I mean, you'll be able to find something. But like when it came for me going into ticket sales, it was more so just me going through my interviews and really liking what um, the people I was talking to were like telling me and what I would be learning and what I would be doing. And it was something I kind of, I I've accepted the challenge and thought it'd be something I'd benefit myself. So, and I definitely think I chose the best sales team to join and coming to the St. Louis Blues. And that's for sure because the training and the um, mentorship I've been getting from them and everyone on our sales team is pretty incredible. So I, that's also pretty interesting. You bring that up. So, I don't know if you knew this, but a uh, few of us are in like an eight week course with mm -hmm. the ticket sales. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. I know yeah, you're okay. working with a, a couple of uh, my manager in particular, Brendan. And my Ryan and Brendan. Girelli, yeah. So. And they've came in. They both of them were excellent. Yeah, they are. They're really good at what they do. And the, their sales process is honestly one of the best things I've ever seen. Like, I mean, their ability to battle objections and just come back. And making someone really want something is, I mean, I strive to be more similar to them, that's for sure. You know, Ryan actually taught us a, uh, taught us a lesson in a hard way during his uh, kind of a thing when he came yeah. in. He, uh, someone asked him in our class, how's your day going? And he decided to answer, oh, my dog died. So, yeah, that was a. Uh, yep. <laughs> no, 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 no. Never. <laughs> oh God, Ryan's crazy. Yeah, um, we try not to ask that just because it kind of shuts the door pretty early. So if you always want to keep the door open. You never want to give someone an out to you know get off the phone with you or get out of a meeting with you. Or you just always want to try to you know set a positive mindset for them. You know, like bring them back to a happy memory, a good experience where they were pro particularly probably at your arena or something like that. That's usually always good. Yeah, asking how they're doing right off the bat is um, it's a uh, no on the sales team. Try not right. to. Do <laughs> Did you have anything? Have you ever had anyone do that to you? I mean, uh, I'm I'm guilty of asking people every now and then because uh, I mean, the first thing I ask when I'm on the phone with like a regular person who's like my friend or my family member, you know, I'm asking how they're doing. I I want to know how they're doing, but like. When it comes to sales, you only you have about seven seconds to you know really connect with someone and put them in a positive mindset to stay on the phone with you. Right, if you don't right. connect with them in that first seven to eight seconds, like they're not, yeah. they may not stay on the phone with you that long. So it's yeah. it's really important, you know, like start off the conversation positive. Right. And uh, with that eight week course, we're actually going down to Atlanta to do the sales competition there. Um. I'll probably, I, I think there's some mini competitions that I might do just, you know. Hey do man, do it. Yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't know until you try, man. I mean, right. it's only going to make you better and help you meet more people. Mm. I was a little bit late to sign up. Well, I didn't really know about the competition until like, I don't know, five weeks into the class, maybe yeah. four, whatever it was. So yeah, I wasn't able to sign up for that. But yeah, so you were in Tampa. Now you're in St. Louis. How'd you, uh, who'd you, who'd you know, or who knew you? <laughs> oh man. Um, 
Well, when you say who you know, I knew quite a bit of people through LinkedIn, which I think is LinkedIn helps me tremendously. Um, my the roommate Connor I talked about previously, he was the one who really got me into LinkedIn because I thought it was just kind of a waste of time, social media, to be honest, where it really wasn't going to give me anywhere. I completely love wrong. Right completely wrong. Like uh, LinkedIn helped me tremendous, tremendously. It helped me build connections throughout the sports industry in particular. And, you know, helped me prepare for my interviews going in. Um, I asked a lot of questions um, before going into my interviews with other sports, you know, people in the sports industry, uh, particularly ticket sales, like director, directors, vice presidents, things like that, of just like different texts to read, like books to read, questions to ask, um, answers to have prepared for my interviews, things like that. And they... I mean, sometimes you'll have people who are just too busy to like get back to you and that's understandable. But I mean, if you really just continue to try and reach out to people, you'll meet the right people who help you along. And that's guaranteed. I mean, if you're genuine about what you're asking and really have a like a willingness to learn, then someone will teach you. And back to that, I probably kind of got off the original question, but um, I didn't really know too many people here in uh, St. Louis, to be honest. Um, I do have one friend. There was a friend. My, I graduated with a class of about 60, 60 okay. in my high school. And it just so happens someone I graduated with lives in Benton. So not too far from St. Louis, about uh, 15, 20 minutes from my house, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of ironic. He lived up here and he's one of he played. He played soccer with me in high school. So it's, he was the goalie. So pretty ironic that he moved up here yeah. as well with his father. And then I moved up about a year later so he's been here for about a year and a half and i've been here for about two to three months now so you just nailed that interview with the blues basically. i don't know if i nailed it i mean i was pretty nervous i mean uh, i'm always <laughs> nervous when it comes to honestly when it comes to public speaking in general yeah. i couldn't even get in front of the like throughout school i feel like i couldn't get in front of the class and speak without stumbling over my words dude i feel you and, <laughs> so um it's kind of ironic that I'm in ticket sales now and I'm on the phone all day with people who I don't know, but I feel a little bit more confident now, definitely than when I was back in school, but it's pretty funny, man. I mean, just how much you grow as an individual, especially once you start working in this kind of industry. I mean, it's fun. So, I mean, it's definitely gives you a chance to grow out of your shell and just, just become a whole different person, to be honest. Dude, it has actually been really fun so far, just in the first what three months two months mm -hmm. what I, yeah we'll say three months just meeting a lot of different people meeting you know people meeting like you you know i just mm -hmm. a random phone call a phone a phone call that i would usually just swipe and never answer but i yeah it's interesting what happens yes it is man yeah. it is and now look what's going on we're raising money for yeah all sorts of stuff <laughs> like it's crazy i mean and you're killing it honestly like i'm pretty sure you've sold more than anyone else in there so yeah Keep doing what you're doing, man. thank you and you know you talk about you know with that uh there are uh fundraiser do you, have you done anything else like that any other projects that you work on uh i am also doing one other it's not a fundraiser it's more so a, like a discount group ticketing page for some friends of mine that i have that are um like diehard blues fans so i've I created like a little discount page for them. But as far as like projects like for you guys fundraising, I haven't done anything too crazy. I recently became involved in the um, Foster and Adoptive Care Coalition of St. Louis here. And awesome. uh, they're currently doing a fundraising event. They actually have, um, it's a Foster Day on November 9th. I think it's coming up pretty soon, November 9th. And um, they are raised, currently raising money for them right now. So um, that's not anything related to the blues or sport, but um, something I'm doing personally. Um, ever since I got up here to St. Louis, I've really become a lot more um, dedicated to just becoming involved in the community, really wanting to help people. I volunteered a decent amount uh, throughout my time in high school and college. I didn't really have that much time throughout school to volunteer as much as I wanted to. That wasn't, you know, sports related. But now I'm getting, becoming to become more involved in like, you know, personal issues that I believe are important, right, so especially right. adoption. I mean, not me personally, but I have a lot of people in my family who have been affected positively by adoption. So I think it's just a, a great uh, business or not business, but a nonprofit to give back to and work with. And so that's what I've been working with recently. So what are you guys doing on November 9th exactly? 
Um, just raising, well, we've been raising money and I know they're doing, actually have it on my phone here. They're doing um, all sorts of fun stuff that day. Let's see. Yeah, it is November 9th, Foster Hope Day. Last, so far we've raised over, uh, last year we raised $7,000. So this year we're looking to raise potentially more, hopefully, um, but doing all sorts of things that day. I mean, yeah, all sorts of things. We're uh, raising that money through um, donations and stuff like that, giving out raffle prizes. They should have some food there. Yeah, some Mission Taco food trucks gonna be there. We're at and pulling off some other stuff. Just so it's going to be fun. It's going to be at um. Let's see where it's at. Do do do. I'm thinking it's at their uh, headquarters where you can go down there. Oh, it's actually November third. What is what is November ninth then? Oh, nine days until November 3rd. So it's on November 3rd. Okay. But yeah, it's down there at their headquarters down here in St. Louis. But I've mostly just been raising money for them because I do work that day. So I won't be able to make it down there, unfortunately. But I have been raising money for it. Send me a link to that. I will. I will. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'll, probably, I'll ask for it later just to remind you. <laughs> Appreciate you. Um, let's see. Where was I? <laughs> Um, in, at your, uh, university, you went to university of Tampa, right? Yep. Um, were you in any, uh, like clubs or, you know, we just started our sport management club there. Were you mm -hmm. in anything like that? Yeah, I was involved in our sport management club. It was the sport and entertainment management club. Um, so I was involved with them, went to the meetings when I could, I worked pretty much full time throughout my uh, entire college experience doing part-time jobs just to have money for myself mm. so I went to the meetings every chance I could and then we would have um on the first Monday of every month we would have um uh, sport professionals from the area come in and just speak on um, internships that are coming up um job opportunities they have for people who are um, on the verge of graduating and so I would go to the monthly meetings quite often I actually the, my freshman year, I went to the very first monthly meeting that was there, and I walked up to a gentleman who was working with the United Soccer League at the time in their uh, member relations department or something like, along those lines. And I just introduced myself as, hey, I really want to become just now an up-and-coming sport management student and want to become involved and, you know, perhaps become an intern. He was like, oh, yeah, like gave me his card. He's like, give me, shoot me an email. Like, I like your energy. Like, let's go. I was, <laughs> I'm sitting there nervous, like shaking my moves, like, well, he likes my energy, like, what? <laughs> but it, it was funny, but it was, um, it was also funnier because at the University of Tampa, like, you can't get credit hours for your internships until your junior and senior year after you gain a certain amount of credits, right. which makes right. sense. And so um, I'm two months into this internship because I, I got the internship, went through an interview, went through another gentleman, uh, John Kochel, through the, at the United Soccer League, and Went through an interview with him, probably was terrible. Looking back on it now, it was probably a terrible interview. No, like he's, mm -hmm. it was probably so bad. But um, he said he allow, allowed me to continue to come and like learn and gave me some nice assignments to do and grow as an individual. Mm -hmm. But then it got about three months in, they're like, okay, so who can we, you know, like assign your credits to? Like, who do we need to go to to, you know, like get some credit put onto your uh, transcript? And I'm like, oh, like this isn't for credit. This is just, me coming down here, you know, having fun volunteering. And they're like, oh, like, this is like, a, this is for someone who needs credits. And I'm like, oh, well, but they let me continue to come. But it was so funny because like, I was just a freshman in there. I was like 18 years old, but it was funny. It, it was, it was a fun experience. But I mean, just willing, you know, to go to things like that, like anything that you have like meetings wise, like where you can potentially meet people. Um, I don't know how old you are, but like happy hours are a good thing. Like a lot of people do those. Those are a good way to network. Just constantly networking yourself. I mean, sport and entertainment management groups are nice, but I mean, if you can get out to like things that are outside the university and things that are like out in the community, like where you're meeting older people and people who are in business, that's what I wish I would have done more on in my time at the University of Tampa. 
I more so just kind of stuck to the school groups, which is mm -hmm. nice. I mean, it gives you some nice like job opportunities and things like that. But just becoming more involved in the community, I wish I would have done a little bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I've been trying to do with the St. Louis Sports Commission. Yeah, and I see get that. Get there a little that's bit more. Good. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, yeah, and on to, you know, uh, what kind of like what you said, you know, I actually just met someone last night at UMSL who mm -hmm. uh, actually graduated from the same high school as me, who is also or was in this uh, uh, sport management program. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, you know, she – it has a job there now. I had no idea. <laughs> so yeah, you know. Yeah, it's all of who you meet, uh, man. It's all of who you meet and you connect with, and it, especially if they see your willingness to learn. Honestly, on constantly ask questions. If you see something that you feel like you could be better at, identify someone who's good at what you want to be at, and then ask them questions, and they'll be more than happy to help you for the most yeah. part. I mean, can't speak for everyone, but I know when. Like when you, you, you were asking me just different things and about different opportunities. Mm -hmm. And like, I love to help people because I know I was in your shoes at one point, not really knowing what direction I was going in. So any kind of pat in the right direction is always a good pat to me. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me about that, by the way, um, that, uh, that, uh, ticket job at the part-time job at the mm -hmm. box office. Yeah. Um, who, who's the best person to talk about? talk to about that or if you have um, i do know we have a couple of different people who probably would work on that mm -hmm. let me see um i'm trying to think of his name off the top of my head i don't want to give you the wrong name and for the box office is that for stiefel am enterprise or is that just enterprise um it may be both mm -hmm. i would probably guess both but the box office is held at the Enterprise Center. So you'd be in the same box office. I mean, I work in the box office on game day sometimes. I'll actually be in the box office tonight working the game. So, I mean, I can give you the name of uh, the right person in contact when we go up here in a little bit. But um, as far as doing the job itself, I mean, it would be excellent experience just because like I was telling you, you'd get used to, you know, do, using the ticket system. Like ours is called Arctix. So you'd be able to get a little bit more familiar with that. Cause I remember my first day, we had a day set aside solely for training on that, which was, I mean, it's quite a robust system. So. Is that what this uh, HubSpot uh, Academy is on your own LinkedIn or licenses? Oh yeah, no, those, that's something that a little bit different. I did that before my interviews, oh, okay. but that's another thing I utilize during my interviews as well. Like, so going online and cause there's, there's a lot of places where you can get free certifications. Like HubSpot is one of them. They literally have free courses online. You can take, it doesn't take long. I mean, a cup, maybe set aside an hour a day for a week and bam, you, you completed it. Like you've gone through all the trainings, you've taken all the tests and like you have that now, like you have that certification for, I'm pretty sure it's a year and then you can go on and redo it. Mm -hmm. So I plan on doing that as well. But I mean, those certain kind of certifications are, extremely crucial to standing out i mean like i said the willingness to learn is big and um by going out and completing those certifications it kind of shows that you have that willingness to learn and the drive right, to you right. know, go out of your way to become a better person so that's kind of why i utilize those and i mean i learned a lot through them so i mean they're not just for show they're definitely they definitely teach you a lot that's awesome um do i mean so i forget who came in to one of the ticket sales class I, I forget it, if it was even a blue, if it was someone with the blues, if it, either it was Brendan or Ryan, it could have been Andrew with the Cardinals, but okay. anyways, they came in and they're like, yeah, so we do, before anyone starts selling anything, we spend a lot of time, you know, going over, you know, how everything works and, you know, how each, uh, what, uh, the product, they teach you a lot about the product, I guess. Yeah. How is that? How long did that take? Oh man, that was a quite, we were, we, we uh, there's one other inside sales rep, her name's Ashley. So me and Ashley were training with Brendan for, I'd say two to three weeks. I'd probably push it towards three, like three weeks. We were um, focusing on knowing the arena, knowing sections of the arena, like aisle to aisle, seat to seat from what was sold, like price ranges for those types of seats, what amenities are sold with those what benefits season ticket holders get, what benefits half season ticket holders get, 
what benefits many plan members get. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot of memorizing. I mean, you should, we have a sales Bible as Brendan calls it. Um, <laughs> and it is a, is a pretty lengthy uh, binder that he put together himself of separated between product knowledge, the sales process, and just like separated into three big chunks. So, I mean, we went through it one chunk at a time. First, we learned ourselves, like kind of like just background knowledge on the team, who works for the team, the team president, the coaches, knowing some of the players, knowing the news, knowing the history of the organization um, is pretty important in our job just because you're talking with people who are iHeart Blues fans. So mm-hmm. being able to connect with them about the product you're selling is really important. And when it came to product knowledge, we spent a good amount of time. We even had a test. We had a test on our product knowledge. So we took it the first time and we both did pretty subpar. <laughs> and yeah. So he was like, all right, guys, now you know what you need to know. Go back, study it again. We'll come back and take it, I think, two days later. And so we did that and we did. A, we both did a heck of a lot better the second time. So, yeah, the training process is pretty rigorous. I mean, with any team, I mean, especially when it's like me moving up here. I've never been never been to a Blues game in my life and never right. stepped foot in an Enterprise Center. So having to go in there and memorize everything that's in there which it comes with time as well. I mean, you can't be expected to know everything. Like I was just walking around last week with a notebook in my hand, writing every concession stand down and where it was just so I would have that knowledge to bring back to someone if they happen to ask like, Oh, so where's this? Where's this? Um, It's kind of my responsibility to know those questions. So I have to, you know, go out of my way to know those things. So by any chance is section 106 row L one of your favorite spots to be at? Yeah, I like it. Man. <laughs> I mean, anything on that shoot twice side is nice. Yeah. I have seats in that 109 and then the 106 I got you the other day. Mm-hmm. So um, anyway, I like the lower bowl, man. I don't like to be towards the center. I'm more behind than that kind of guy. But every every seat, there's not a bad seat in the Enterprise Center. Oh, so every sure. seat has its perks. Every seat has its perks. Personally, I'm more of a middle, uh, uh, higher bowl in there. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, that can be a fun. I mean, it's totally two different experiences, too. So you can go to one game and sit down low and have a different experience than going to the game and sitting up high. So, I mean, it's it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. I love I've kind of gotten a love for hockey now. I mean, yeah. I, growing up in Florida wasn't anything that you know interested me a whole lot. But now that I'm working in it, I love it. And I love the blues. The blues are awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tarasenko actually got a nice little uh, snipe in there right in front of us. It was pretty cool. Um, so, you know, so you just got into hockey, right? Yeah, I worked – well, I worked a little bit with the Tampa Bay Lightning during their uh, back-to-back cup run this past two years. Um, I was working um, in operations outside, so mostly just uh, fan relations, fan and guest relations out on the plazas. So that was pretty fun. Just got to – interact with a lot of people got to meet Vita Vea one time as he was coming into the arena oh, yeah. I had like looked up and I seen him I was like Whoa. <laughs> hey hey like welcome in and I was like a big fan man a big fan yeah, so, yeah it gave me a little fist bump and walked in I was like dang that was cool oh, I'm sorry <laughs> but yeah I was like yeah that was cool <laughs> but um but yeah it was a good experience man I mean that was a fun time just being around a team that was making a, like a cup run and eventually won it was Dude, yeah. I think I didn't make it home till like maybe one thirty the night they won. Like I'm usually <laughs> home at home eleven o'clock, like ten thirty maybe. So it was hectic, but it was awesome. It was awesome, man. I love work. It's like moments like that that make you appreciate working in sports in any capacity. So we've we've both been to a Stanley Cup parade. Is have you? Did you go to the parade? Oh man, I've been to three Stanley I've been to two Stanley Cup parades and one Super Bowl parade so uh, I've been right nice. there for all of them I was right there I was up there uh, bright and early for every single one of them <laughs> that's awesome I actually <laughs> um for the Blues parade I actually got up right where right to Enterprise Center right where they came out of the door on the right side it was oh, the no first way. one there yeah it was it, it was it was a fun day that I was, bet, yeah, yeah, every day, every boat parade that we had down there was, yeah. was quite a long day, I should say. And I'm sure you've seen the pictures of that parade. Oh, yeah, I know. The we entire actually, city oh, was there. <laughs> yeah, we have a huge, uh, like, mural 
in our office of the entire parade that day. It's pretty, pretty cool. Mm. That's, dude, that's awesome. That, that's just some perks working in sports. I it must is, be. Man. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's when things get kind of tough, you kind of sit back and you got to remind yourself that that's why you're in this industry is for like those moments. Like it can definitely get tough sometimes. Definitely. Like, <laughs> I speak firsthand that sometimes you, like you can get down in the dumps, especially in sales. Like sometimes you can get into a slump and it's like, man, this stinks. <laughs> like this stinks, but you just got to sit back and remind yourself what you're doing every day. You're coming, doing things people wish they were doing. So it's all, you know, kind of just when things get like that, taking a step back, taking a deep breath and just kind of setting the balance, you know, not right, getting ever right. too down on yourself. Like, like I said before, I'm pretty hard on myself. So in sales, you can't be too hard on yourself. You can never be too high. You can never be too down. So just kind of kind of ride that middle wave right there. Stay dedicated. Stay willing to learn. And that's how you'll succeed in sales. So as, as I've found so far, I haven't not touted myself as being successful, but I've identified the people in our office who are successful and those are the characteristics they have. Yeah, like you told me yesterday say, or the other day, sales isn't everything. <laughs> yeah no yeah, yeah you're right man. uh you know i honestly i do not have any more questions at the moment um i i think i covered everything i think there's probably more um i mean we could always hop back on another yeah. zoom call if you ever have more questions yeah. man. um you know make sure to send me the link to your uh foundation yeah, yeah. Will, and the uh, i have it on my linkedin as well Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure. Um, yeah, I'll something. get it over to you. Yeah, I'll cool. get it over to you. But uh, yeah. Um, honestly, this was great. Thank you for coming. Yeah, of course, man. Yeah. If you ever need anything else, or anyone else needs any other interviews, feel free to send them my way. I'll try to help them out the best I can. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, man. You asked some awesome questions, and hopefully, I was able to help you. Oh, for sure. Um, definitely a whole different perspective from uh, the first person. You're more starting off. He's way into it <laughs> yeah definitely yeah i'm definitely getting started man it's it's definitely a grind i mean sports isn't easy and if it's something you want to do which i have no i mean by all means do it because i love it but it is a grind so always stay positive always keep your head on your shoulders straight and try to never like i said get too high or get too low just stay dedicated stay willing to learn everything will everything will fall in around you all right well Thank you. Uh, do you mind if I post this on YouTube and LinkedIn? Yeah, of course, man. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, thank you for coming. I will, you know, I will definitely stay in touch with you. Probably, we'll probably see each other for the sports commission. I'm thinking. We'll oh yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. more than likely be there. So feel uh, free to stop by me, and we'll we'll chat it up, man. Yeah, and if you can put a good word in for me for Tim Bryan, that'd be awesome. I got <laughs> you, man. I'll try my best. Okay. All good. All right, uh, you you have a great day. Uh, yeah, of course, Alex. If you need anything else from me, just you got my phone number. Yeah, reach out to me. Okay. Will do. See you. Yeah, have a good one, man. See ya.